There are many different types of password attacks. A spraying attack is when an uh, attacker would just use default passwords on as many accounts as possible. This is very common with websites and website administration. Uh, with CybercraftTrain.com, I see dozens of attacks on a weekly basis, all trying to hack my base administrator account. So they'll try the admin uh, username, and then they'll try the basic password for the site. Now, of course, as a trained cybersecurity professional, I've disabled that admin account. There's no default admin account on my site, and I don't have any default passwords. But this is a very effective, surprisingly effective technique where attackers, really, they're just trying to play statistics. They'll target thousands and thousands of sites or accounts, and then just, just try the default uh, passwords. If somebody has not reset their password, changed their password from the default, or eliminated the default name of the user of the administrator account, then these attacks can be very effective. A lot of times, bots are used. These are automated attacks. You're gonna have huge botnets performing thousands of attacks on a daily basis, and the attackers are only going to pay attention to the ones that succeed. They don't care who they're targeting, they're just trying to find any success. A dictionary attack, now when it comes to hacking passwords, you have two different methods. You can log onto a website, you can try and enter the password into the password field, and see if you guess the right password. That's called an online attack. And there's other types of online attacks where you would, uh, you would intercept somebody's inputs, like you would you key logging, you put a man the browser attack or man the middle attack where you intercept somebody when they're inputting their password into one of these sites. And then you'd steal those credentials and use them for yourself. Offline attacks are when you have a password hash and you're trying to guess or decipher that password hash. Now, passwords nowadays, if you use good cybersecurity practices, are not stored in plain text on a database. So if you have a login for a tool on your website, like a Gmail login, that those passwords are not stored by Google as plain text passwords. What Google will do is they'll take what the user has inputted and they'll run it through a hashing program like SHA-2. Then they'll store that password hash. The next time the user comes onto the site and puts uh, some characters, they'll take a password hash of what they've inputted and then they'll compare the two hashes of what the user said initially to what they just received. If there's a match, the user is authenticated. That's how modern authentication works. So if attackers were able to access a database and steal the password hashes, the things that are stored, they could then perform offline attacks. One of these offline attacks is a dictionary attack. So what you're using with a dictionary attack, you're just going through every word in the dictionary. This usually takes a long time, a lot of processing power. And it's exactly what it sounds like. A more effective attack is known as a rainbow table. A rainbow table is a list of common passwords. And these things can be enormous in size. They can be like 40 gigabytes in size. And they're used for different types of hashes. So what they'll do is they'll list all of these hashes that correspond to commonly used passwords. And then attackers will just have to put the hash that they've recovered into the rainbow table and try and find a match. If they find a match, then they can decipher it because the rainbow table will list the plain text value. Then the attacker goes onto the site and puts the plain text value and gains access to the website or service. Brute force attacks are where the attacker takes the password hash they've recovered in an offline brute force attack, and then they just try and uh, decipher the password by guessing all the different possible combinations. Now, this takes a lot of processing power and a lot of time. And this is different than a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack uses words from the dictionary. So it kind of has a starting place. With a brute force attack, you're starting from scratch. You're going to, uh, the password might be AAAAAA1, AAAAA2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you just keep going until you find the password. That's these things. If you have a, a long enough password with enough complexity, you can stop brute force attacks offline because it would take processing power that's uh, exponentially more difficult than it would be normally. So like if you have 12 characters, upper, lowercase, numbers, and symbols, it would take the attacker an exceedingly long time to guess that password. Now plain text or unencrypted, uh, this 
all refers to the fact that sometimes passwords are stored not as password hashes, they're stored in plain text. And when an attacker breaks into a database, they can find these plain text passwords and then they can just use them. Or if you're logging into a web resource and you're sending information over HTTP, attackers just have to uh, sniff that information, sniff the packets as they're en route to the resource and they'll see your, your inputs, your keyboard inputs, and they can find your password that way. So those are the types of password attacks you should know for the exam. Uh, 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 uh.